Hello! You probably already know the 4.5 hours long Twin Peaks actually explained no really presentation from 2019. Produced by the duo going by the name Twin Perfect and presented by Rossiter, one half of the duo. If you don't know the video or to remind you the argument impressively laid out in their video, forget everything you ever heard, boils down to four basic premises. Number one. American TV audiences in the 90s were emotionally disconnected from the content they consumed, especially from the omnipresent consumable violent content. Number 2. Consumable TV violence is to blame for the rise of negativity in general and especially for the rise of violence in the USA. Number 3. David Lynch created Twin Peaks to balance the negativity of American TV content by shining the light of investigation into the darkness of Laura Palmer's life and an extension of that investigation into the darkness of the audience. Number 4. The audience is to blame for David Lynch's failure to balance the negativity of American TV content then and now. I'm unfortunately not being hyperbolic when I say that while I find the idea interesting and the undertaking ambitious and the train of thoughts creative and the evidence brought forth a witness to Twin Perfect's richness of fantasy, I also have to say that I find that none of the arguments and none of the evidence necessarily leads to the conclusion that David Lynch created Twin Peaks to bring balance to 1990s TV. I hesitate to make such a sweeping statement since Twin Perfect must have put a lot of work into this project and especially since I won't explain why in detail. I will say this though. Neither David Lynch nor Mark Frost have ever stated explicitly nor have they unambiguously hinted at the real meaning behind Twin Peaks that is hidden in a supposed meta-narrative layer which needs to be unlocked with a special key. And neither David Lynch nor Mark Frost have ever pointed at a hidden real intention to tell that story behind just wanting to tell that story. They have pretty much openly stated their gratitude to have been given the gift of maximum creative freedom without pressure from anyone to tell a story which fascinates them, with characters and in a setting they love. I hope I see all of you again. Every one of you. Twin Peaks feels like a dream now. A dream conjured to life by two friends over 20 years ago in a lightning strike of creative freedom and exuberance. A vision shared and brought to life by over 200 talented artists, actors, craftspeople and technicians. With no studio leaning on us, over the course of 18 months we produced 9 hours of the show in splendid isolation, but for a minute of it was ever broadcast. This was, in the best sense of the word, an amateur endeavor, driven by our love of the work, not the cold-blooded professionalism that drives most of this industry. Mark Frost and David Lynch are two storytellers who clicked when they met the first time. It began, appropriately, over a cup of coffee in the mid-1980s. Pi was definitely involved. When David and I met, we hit it off from the get-go, with a shared passion for classic films and senses of humor that clicked like Ike and Mike. They inspired each other and this way Twin Peaks sprung into life. We really didn't know what we were creating, because this was truly in the imagination of both David Lynch and Mark Frost. And Mark really is an unsung hero in that he did a lot of storytelling and then allowed David's imagination to take off on the set. So the whole argument Twin Perfect presents is pure speculation in the framework of a self-constructed narrative that they define as being purposefully meta. Another reason why I won't explain my reasoning is because this video is meant to present the one thing Twin Perfect almost got right. For the sake of this argument, it is only necessary to know the basic premises. Actually, it is only necessary to know that Twin Perfect believes that TV in the 1990s was out of balance and that this imbalance influenced the audience and society negatively. That being said, I have found one piece of evidence in Twin Perfect's video, a quote by David Lynch, which would be perfect to lay the groundwork on to show that indeed TV was out of balance, so to speak, in the sense David Lynch describes it in his quote, and then compare the 90s with today to find that with the emergence of social media the imbalance got even bigger. The result could be a comprehensive presentation of TV's negative influence on society, not only in the US but worldwide. Beginning with the early days when TV became a mass medium, ending today with modern social media. 
In addition to such representation, possible solutions to the problem could be introduced. David Lynch's practice of transcendental meditation, for example. It would just need it to be worked in differently. In fact, such a work is still possible to do, just not by me. Why? Because I'm lazy. I said lazy. So let's listen to Rossiter reading the quote by David Lynch. Has the violent aspect of the culture increased, or did we just use to police it better? It's way bigger now. Dark things have always existed, but they used to be in a proper balance with good, and life was slower. There were things that they were afraid of for sure, but now it's accelerated to where the anxiety level of the people is in the stratosphere. TV sped things up and caused people to hear way more bad news. And there it is. David Lynch is speaking about the news. News are predominantly negative, potentially stressing, depressing, even hysteria-inducing. So much so, the international classification of diseases should include diagnosis codes for TV-induced psychosis and Twitter-induced psychosis or something like that. Another artist who performed at the beginning of the 1990s, Bill Hicks, had a similar feeling that TV was out of whack and bad for your mental health. He summed it up quite well in a performance from 1991. You know my problem? I figured it out. I watch too much news. That is my problem. I watch too much news, man. I can depress the shit out of you. You ever watch CNN for longer than, say, 20 hours in one day? I don't recommend it. Try watching CNN headline news for one hour one day. You'll be so bummed. It's unfucking believable One hour of CNN. War, famine, death, AIDS, homeless, recession, depression. War, famine, death, AIDS, homeless, Then you look out your window, it's just... <laughs> Where is all this shit happening? <laughs> Unlike David Lynch, who according to Twin Perfect wanted to bring balance to TV, Bill Hicks recommended to turn off the TV, because he felt TV was like taking black spray paint to your third eye, and read books instead. Personally, I reject his other recommendation, which is the use of hallucinogenic drugs. But it makes a lot of sense to me to turn off the TV when its programming drives you insane, or to change the channel, or to do it the Jim Morrison way. Or better not. Or just turn the damn knob. <laughs> he meant to say TV. Since Twin Peaks is a fictional story and recognized as such and never harmed anyone as opposed to the news, which may or may not be fictional, but are always presented as real, think of propaganda, here's another reason why I don't think David Lynch created Twin Peaks to bring balance to TV. If all those TV series were harmful to its viewers like Twin Peaks Black Fire, then why would a reasonable human being like David Lynch assume that a TV series could be a fire extinguisher? Fighting fire with fire. It would have made more sense to make a documentary on propaganda in 1990s America and how the TV is utilized by interest groups to spread their message into the minds of the masses. And then the Gulf War happened. They gotta remember that was the first live television war. Which is still and globally relevant today. You know we are ruled by TV. So, how about it, Twin Perfect? Where are the feasts we were promised?